Solar power can be used in many ways. It creates both wind and waves, and it can be converted directly into energy. But it is most efficiently utilized in hydropower. The sun makes water evaporate and it gets what is known as height energy. When precipitation falls on the sea, it has lost all its energy. But when precipitation falls in the mountains, it is still bursting dynamic, clean energy. On its way back to the sea, water releases this energy with the help of power stations. A perpetual cycle generating pure, clean energy with no waste or pollution. Nature has given Norway ideal terrain for hydropower. The country has numerous large mountain formations and high waterfalls. There is usually enough precipitation all year round. Modern hydroelectric power stations are discreetly hidden inside mountains. Inside the power hole, we only see part of the power unit, the top of the generator. A power unit consists of two main components. On the top there is a generator which rotates to make electricity. And on the bottom there is a turbine which runs the generator. Water drives the turbine around and turbines are designed in different ways depending on water pressure and volume. Modern turbines convert up to 94% of the height energy in the water into mechanical rotation and electricity. A power plant often has several generators. Water is channeled into turbines through inlet tunnels from reservoirs that are often mountain lakes that have been dammed up. Reservoirs are often linked together in chains connected by tunnels. In periods with heavy precipitation, excess power can be used to pump water up to the highest reservoirs. The reservoir's water levels will therefore vary throughout the year, but a minimum water level is always stipulated to protect the environment. Run of river power stations work on the same principle, but here water from the through flowing river passes through the turbines. Although the water does not fall from great heights, the volumes of water are even greater and can run enormous turbines, often with propellers up to 10 meters in diameter. These massive forces produce huge amounts of power. Large transformers ensure the electricity has the correct voltage and is adapted to the supply grid. All ECO's power stations are controlled from the power center at Gul. Hatches open and close automatically as required in the various reservoirs. They are controlled by the power center's schedules. The power center also controls other energy companies' facilities. ECO is one of the Nordic region's largest producers of clean electrical energy. The enterprise helps ensure that society has a stable, adequate power supply. ECO is headquartered in Oslo. The group owns and operates power stations throughout southern Norway. ECO also contributes to the development of companies that it co-owns. These are Vinstra Kraftselskap, Oplandskraft, Opland Energi and Norsk Grønkraft. ECO's history dates back more than a century. One December evening in 1892, something happened to change the future of Norway's capital city. Christiania Electricity Board lit the city's first electric streetlights. Then along came another innovation, electric trams. Electricity had come to stay, and the demand for it soon exceeded all expectations. Industry also realized there were clear advantages to using electricity. Electric engines soon replaced complicated machinery and electricity also paved the way for new energy-intensive industries. It was not long before steam-driven generators failed to keep up with demand. 
Uslo Lieswerker, the precursor of today's eco, decided to try something new, that is, to make electricity from water. Hamann, Christiana's first hydroelectric power station, was completed at Maridalen in 1900. This was a daring pioneer project intended to meet all the city's electricity needs for all eternity. However, the exponential rise in consumption meant that Uslo was forced to seek new opportunities beyond the city limits. Maridalen, a few kilometers north of the city of Oslo, this was where it all began. This was the site of the first hydropower project to supply the city with electricity. It is still in operation today, just as it has been for more than 100 years. ECO's first hydropower plant marked the start of what can only be described as the fantastic development of clean, natural energy. Lake Shashun collects water from the catchment areas in Nomarka Forest and a large dam was built in the lower end of the lake. The power plant proper was located more than two kilometers further down to exploit as much of the drop as possible. The water was run through huge pipes. It was a challenge to handle the fierce pressure in the pipes given the 110 meter drop. The pipeline is 2.4 kilometers in length. This was the first time such long pipelines had ever been built in Norway. The solution was vessel quality steel plates delivered from Scotland. The project was a tremendous feat of engineering. None of those involved had previous experience of this. Would it work at all? The construction workers really struggled with some of the equipment. The plan called for six generators in the power station. A lot of the equipment was developed and built in Norway, but the advanced generators were imported from Switzerland. The next step was to transport the power across the eight kilometers to the capital city. Was the solution to bury a cable? That would prove far too costly. What about stringing cable on power masts? But what about wind and snow and trees that could blow over? What would happen if the cable broke, resulting in exposed power lines? After a great deal of discussion, sturdy masts were erected and a distributing main conducted the power to a secondary station within the city limits. The final segment of the stretch would be diverted through a cable. This bold project was implemented in the year 1900. Hammond Power Station was completed and worked as planned. The proud developers proclaimed that the city's power needs would now be met for perpetuity. But already in 1927, the station was renovated and the generators were replaced by one gigantic generator unit rated at no less than 5,000 kilowatts. Even though Hamann is an old power station, regular upgrading work is done continuously and the entire control panel was recently replaced. Nowadays, Hamann has been completely modernized and is operated like any other modern power station. Today, it meets the normal needs of 1,000 households. At the same time, Hamann is an important and valuable cultural monument. Hydropower has made a formidable contribution to the prosperity of Norwegian society as a whole. This has also translated into valuable tax revenues for the host municipalities. The knowledge and expertise developed by working with concrete and mountain technology has also played a pivotal role in Norway's petroleum industry. ECO's production planners in Oslo strive to get as much as possible out of each drop of water in the reservoirs. Each day, thorough analyses are made of the weather, inflow and market conditions before power is produced and sold through Nordpool, the common Nordic power exchange. ECO and other Nordic producers offer power on Nordpool. The buyers include power suppliers, which then resell the power to the end users. Energy prices are a product of supply and demand. The market helps improve the efficiency of the production and distribution of electricity. Energy prices ensure a balance between how much power we use and how much is available to us. Rising prices indicate that more power is required to meet the need, and high prices stimulate more production and less consumption. Due to considerable variations in precipitation from year to year, in Norway we are completely dependent on having exchange capacity with the countries around us. That makes us less vulnerable to years with little precipitation, since power can be imported then. 
This also means that we can export power in wet years and when prices are higher abroad. Produced power cannot be saved, but water can be stored in reservoirs. In contrast to wind power and other energy sources, hydropower production can swiftly be regulated up and down to adapt to the demand for power. The fact that hydropower can be regulated like this is of great importance for the focus placed on other renewable energy. Having a large amount of regulatable energy like hydropower is a prerequisite for developing, for example, wind power, which cannot be regulated to any great extent. Society is becoming increasingly dependent on electricity. Many places produce electricity using fossil sources, such as coal or oil, that lead to greenhouse gas emissions. They can be replaced by renewable energy sources. Increasing renewable power production in Norway will have environmental dividends because it will reduce fossil-based power production in other countries. For each additional gigawatt hour of hydropower production, emissions are reduced by the equivalent of what 200 cars produce in a year. All Eco's power production is based on renewable sources that are virtually free of emissions of greenhouse gases. The world will not tolerate more greenhouse gas emissions. Most people would agree with that. ECO is working actively to do something about this. Sometimes production can be increased significantly by continuing to upgrade the power plants and by the development of accessible waterfalls. ECO is involved in a number of projects on its own or in collaboration with other companies. Hydropower is one of many solutions to future energy and climate challenges. The possibilities are great and the challenges are many. With more than 100 years experience in the energy industry, ECO will be a key player in the energy society of the future, based on clean power. Our job will continue to be to manage our water resources as well as possible for society and the environment.